In this 11-minute tutorial, you will learn about adrenergic physiology and common adrenergic drug categories, exploring drug mechanism of action, adverse effects, and contraindications. At the end, you can test your knowledge with some multiple choice practice questions. There is no rest and digest going on here. Adrenergic and cholinergic pathways have many names. The adrenergic pathway is referred to as the sympathetic pathway, and the cholinergic pathway is referred to as the parasympathetic pathway. Sympathomimetic or anticholinergic refer to the adrenergic pathway, and parasympathomimetic and sympatholytic refer to the cholinergic pathway. An adrenergic response occurs when the nervous system receives a specific trigger initiating preganglionic neuron impulse. Acetylcholine is released by the preganglionic neuron, binding with the nicotinic receptors of the postganglionic neuron, and norepinephrine is released, binding with the adrenergic receptors throughout the body. Another pathway that occurs in adrenergic response is direct stimulation of the adrenal gland, resulting in release of epinephrine. Epinephrine is the body's form of adrenaline. Let's review the response of each receptor site when in an agonist state. When norepinephrine binds with alpha-1, beta-1, or beta-2, an adrenergic or fight-or-flight response will occur. However, if norepinephrine binds with the alpha-2 receptor sites, a cholinergic or rest-and-digest response occurs. Understanding how adrenergic receptor sites function makes it easier to understand how adrenergic drugs work. Alpha-1 and beta-2 receptor sites are located in the smooth muscle tissue of the blood vessels, the heart, ureter, uterus, bronchioles, throughout the nervous system, and even in the muscles that control pupil size. Compared to the alpha-1 and beta-2 receptor sites, the alpha-2 and beta-1 receptors are more limited in body locations where they are present. Alpha-2 receptors are found in the heart and smooth muscle tissue of the blood vessels and throughout the nervous system. Beta-1 receptors are found in the heart and juxtaglomerular cells of the kidneys. Going from head to toe, I'll review some of the more common adrenergic and cholinergic responses throughout the body based on the locations where adrenergic and cholinergic receptor sites are found. In an adrenergic state, the brain and central nervous system will be in a heightened state. Pupils will dilate, digestive processes are halted, leading to decreased salivation and decreased peristalsis. The heart rate and blood pressure increase, while the smooth muscle in the lungs relaxes, leading to bronchodilation. The bladder muscle relaxes and urinary sphincter contracts, allowing urine to fill. In a cholinergic response, the neurological system is in more of a somnolent state. Pupils will be constricted, digestive processes occur such as increased salivation and peristalsis, heart rate and blood pressure decrease, and the smooth muscle of the bronchioles within the lungs are no longer in a relaxed state resulting in a bronchoconstriction response. When the bladder completely fills with urine, stretch receptors will initiate the micturition response leading to bladder contraction and urinary sphincter relaxation, allowing the bladder to empty. Summarizing receptor site responses and connecting that to each drug category's mechanism of action and possible side effects, remember that adrenergic agonist and cholinergic antagonist drugs will yield adrenergic responses and side effects, whereas cholinergic agonist and adrenergic antagonist drugs will lead to cholinergic responses and side effects. Now let's review each drug category, which optimizes these receptor sites for its adrenergic effects. Starting with the alpha-1 agonist category, the prototype drug is synephrine. A suffix of drugs commonly used in this category is PHRINE. This drug group is primarily used to treat symptoms of upper respiratory infections, specifically nasal congestion. Nasal congestion occurs when blood vessels in the nasal passages are inflamed and swollen, leading to a constricted nasal passage for air to move through. To reduce nasal congestion, alpha-1 agonists cause vasoconstriction, which decreases the size of the blood vessels in the nostrils, allowing air to move through more easily. Because this drug is an adrenergic drug, side effects include fast heart rate, high blood pressure, increased alertness leading to possible insomnia. Patients with underlying cardiac conditions should avoid this drug category due to risk of exacerbation. Rebound or worsening congestion can occur if using a nasal decongestant like synephrine for longer than five days. Next up are the alpha-2 antagonist agents. Atipamazole is a drug in this category used in veterinary medicine as a reversal agent for alpha-2 agonists like 
dexmedetomidine. Dexmedetomidine is used for its cholinergic or sedative properties and becoming more widely used in ICU and operative settings. The suffix of this drug is E-Z-O-L-E. The drug works by inhibiting norepinephrine from binding with alpha-2 receptors, which causes an adrenergic response instead of a cholinergic response. Adrenergic side effects that result are faster heart rate, central nervous system stimulation leading to tremors and insomnia. If this drug is given too quickly when using as a reversal agent for dexmedetomidine, cardiac collapse can occur. Now for the beta agonist drugs. Remember that beta-1 receptors are only present in the cardiovascular system and juxtaglomerular cells of the kidney, therefore effects of drugs in this category will yield predominantly cardiovascular effects. Beta-2 receptors are present in numerous locations, including the heart and lungs, therefore this category will have more systemic effects when compared to the beta-1 receptor agonist drugs. Dobutamine is the prototype drug for the beta-1 agonist category. The suffix is amine, A-M-I-N-E. This drug category is used for its adrenergic effects in patients with cardiogenic shock. Cardiac output is improved by the adrenergic effects caused by this drug category, including arterial constriction, which increases blood pressure, and increased atrioventricular node conduction, which increases the heart rate. The third benefit of dobutamine is stimulation of norepinephrine release that propagates the adrenergic process, further improving cardiac output. Patients who have chronic tachyarrhythmia should not receive this drug category due to the potential of causing new rhythm disturbances. The most common beta-2 agonist drug used is albuterol. The common suffix of drugs in this category is T-E-R-O-L. Albuterol is used for the adrenergic effects on the lungs, causing relaxation of smooth muscle within the airways, leading to bronchodilation. Albuterol is a mainstay of treatment for patients with chronic pulmonary conditions like asthma or COPD. Because beta-2 receptors are located in several areas, including the cardiovascular system, the side effects include increased heart rate, chest palpitations, tremors, and restlessness. Patients with underlying chronic cardiac conditions like hypertension should use this drug cautiously due to potential exacerbation or worsening of the cardiac condition. Now we will tackle some practice questions to test your knowledge about adrenergic agonist drugs. You will have 10 seconds to pick your answer. If you need longer than 10 seconds, you can pause the video after the question is read. Good luck. A sympathomimetic drug would result in which of the following side effects? Select all that apply. Pupil dilation, pupil constriction, insomnia, bradycardia, tachycardia. Sympathomimetic is another term used to represent the adrenergic pathway. Pupil dilation, insomnia, and tachycardia are expected physiologic outcomes when adrenergic drugs are given. In an antagonist state, which receptor site will result in an adrenergic response? Alpha-1, alpha-2, beta-1, beta-2. When norepinephrine binds with alpha-2 receptor sites as an agonist action, a cholinergic response is expected. Therefore, an antagonist or blocking action on this receptor site would lead to the opposite response being adrenergic symptoms. A patient presents to the urgent care in respiratory distress. The patient has a history of seasonal allergies and eczema. On exam, the patient has prolonged expiratory wheezes throughout. Which medication will likely be given to this patient? Albuterol, dobutamine, propanolol, racemic epinephrine.
Common historical features in patients with asthma include allergies, eczema, or asthma experienced by the patient or family members. Exam findings during an exacerbation include prolonged expiratory phase with wheezing. If a chest x-ray is obtained, a common finding is hyperexpansion of the lung fields to the ninth or 10th ribs bilaterally. Because this patient has positive history and exam findings consistent with asthma, albuterol is the first line treatment for exacerbation. A patient is prescribed albuterol meter dose inhaler and supplied with a spacer to use with medication administration. The patient is curious about how much time should elapse in between puffs of the medication. The best response would be no pauses needed, one minute, five minutes, or 10 minutes. When delivering inhalations of a meter dose inhaler of the same medication, one minute in between puffs is ideal. When delivering inhalations of two different medications, for example, albuterol and then the corticosteroid fluticasone, the patient should wait five minutes in between the last inhalation of albuterol and the first inhalation of the second medication, fluticasone. Which two of the following receptors are located in the lungs? Alpha-1, alpha-2, beta-1, beta-2. Of these receptor sites, the alpha-1 and beta-2 receptors are the two types of receptors that are located in the lungs. We hope that you enjoyed this tutorial and we were able to help you learn more about adrenergic responses and pharmacotherapy.